Today I'll be diving into my first video which will make up part of a series which aims to explore the potential sexualization of female gamers, and in particular streamers, whether this be through their own actions or through the audience's comments. To kick everything off, I'm first going to undertake a media archaeology approach to the subject. I believe it's important to know where we've come from before we start analysing the present. In case you don't know what media archaeology means, it's simply examining past media examples and formats in an attempt to try and understand our current media landscape. Art has to be one of the oldest media formats around, with origins tracing back to over 73,000 years ago. Art was not always available to everyone, it was a closed off field in which males dominated. Many popular artworks featured female muses, yet there are relatively few celebrated female artists. Females were not yet viewed as valid creators or consumers of media. Around World War II, another type of art emerged, the pin-up girl. These artworks were used to raise soldier morale while fighting overseas. In this sense, within media, females have always been used as an object for male gaze. Of course, back then, that was the purpose of these artworks. It was a known fact that they were for male consumption. More modernly, we tend to use digital media formats such as television and our smartphones. Featuring women within advertising has always been popular, but within certain types of advertising, females are used as a sexual object. Most notably, this occurs within advertising which focuses on female athletes. Unlike their male counterparts, females are often subject to unnecessary sexualization, often not having the luxury of being portrayed as performance athletes. Back in 2013, the clothing brand Roxy received massive backlash for their advertisement for the Roxy Pro Surfing Competition. Their promo, surprisingly enough, featured no actual surfing, instead choosing to focus on the young woman's assets. I'll link the video down below so you can watch it for yourselves. Advertisements like these have become common in today's media. At the end of the day, sex sells. This sexualization of women within media is, of course, nothing new. Caitlin Graff, Sarah Mernon and Anna Cruz explored the sexualization of girls within magazines in their 2013 study. They found that within Seventeen magazine, the appearance of sexualizing characteristics had tripled over the last three decades, and in Girls Life magazines, sexual characteristics had increased more than 15 times in 2011 compared to when it was founded. This sort of sexualization of young girls in easy to access media formats sets the scene for today's media landscape. It helps to normalize the sexualization of females within the media, making it something commonplace that we've all experienced since a young age. In terms of advertisements of games, females are generally not subject to over-sexualization like they are in other types of advertisements. With 48% of women in the US reporting playing games, they're an incredibly profitable market for game producers. 43.9% of commercials for games feature both females and males. Although, within these advertisements, females are not necessarily depicted as game players. In commercials where females are present, only 22% featured a woman actually playing the game, compared to 47.8% of males. In this sense, even though females make up a large portion of the gaming community, the advertisements which feature them don't even tend to show them as actual gamers. Rather, they are just accessories to the plot. In my next video, I'll go into more depth about female representation within games. Considering how female characters are used within games, as well as female participation within gaming. I'll also analyse in more depth how the representation of female gamers within the media may affect female participation within games. If you have anything you would like to contribute to the subject, let me know down below. As always, I'm open to feedback and from hearing from different perspectives. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.